wanted to talk about uh, some survival tactics, uh, knowing what these people will utilize uh, on a whim to force you guys to comply with anything they want to do. They know that uh, by controlling the food source, the water source, electricity, uh, especially encroaching upon winter, how dangerous it is for you not to be prepared with a source of heat, I would highly suggest you start looking into wood-burning stoves. There's a constant fuel source always around us. Uh, an old rancher once told me, I said, you want me to cut down them dead trees? He goes, heavens no. Why would you do that? They're standing tall, they're, they're preserved, they're put up, and uh, I want them around my place because if shit ever hits the fan, I have a source of fuel that's not more than 50 yards from the house. And it made a lot of sense to me, but a lot of people don't have that kind of... Uh, uh, knowledge about them. It's not necessarily common sense as it is acquired knowledge. And so I asked this man a number of questions. I said, where did you gain all this knowledge? He said, well, you see, my father went through the, what they call the dirty thirties, the depression. He went on to articulate that he don't keep things in the bank because possession is nine tenths of the law. And if you don't have it in your hands, you won't be able to ascertain it when you need it. A wood-burning stove is critical, especially come wintertime if they decide to shut off your gas, shut off your electricity to get you to comply and conform because you're cold, you're hungry, you want somewhere to go. You, you just need a hot meal. You've, you've done thrown in the towel and given up the resistance. <laughs> it's, it's like the movie's Hunger Games, man. It's, it's crazy what they're doing. Uh, people used to say, oh, Derek, you're... you're uh, your thought process is fatally flawed. This is the land of the free, the home of the brave. These are where great men have uh, molded society. We have made uh, technological advances that have, have uh, not only bolstered and bettered our communities, but made sure that our freedom will forever remain intact. Freedom, ladies and gentlemen, is just one generation away from being destroyed. Freedom is never free. Freedom only is, is preserved by the vigilant, by the ones who uh, wish and push and desire to be free. You see, because the offspring of today have never been as free as the offspring of yesterday. Let me help put that into perspective for you. Your great-grandparents were more free than you are today. Yes, life might have been a little more trying. There might have been a little more hard times. It might have been a little rough. You might not have had the luxuries back then that you have today. But those luxuries breed soft, weak, dependent people. They get accustomed to it. So I'll post the other day, said, if the internet disappeared tomorrow, could you survive? And I was astonished at all the people that were like, oh my gosh, if the internet was gone tomorrow, I would die. <whistles> That's scary. Wood burning stoves are essential during power outages, things of that nature. People say, well, what about generic, generic generators, Derek? What do you think of those? I said, yeah, that's a good backup, but only so long as you have fuel to run them. All right, but a wood-burning stove provide a source of heat, provide you a flat top to cook on, provide you a source of light in the evening. You know, uh, I know many of uh, elders that still carry and keep in their homes oil-burning lamps, oil-burning lamps. Yeah, you almost don't see them anymore, but. Uh, now, I've done a lot of remodels in my life. I'm not going to divulge the people's name because they have a right to be entitled to their privacy. And as a contractor, privacy is one of the... Uh, it's one of the most valued things. 
when you're a contractor. You see, I built multi-million dollar homes for a while, and there were times where we actually had to sign non-disclosure forms because people didn't want their neighbors realizing they were spending $180,000 on a single granite rock carved out to be their bathtub. People didn't want the neighbors to know or the people, the general populace, to know that they were using uh, pure gold faucets and handles for their toilets. All right? So in situations like that, you would have to sign a non-disclosure form. And if you were caught in breach of contract, you could bet your sweet bum there were repercussions. There were some of those non-disclosure forms, although some of the work that we did was so gorgeous and eloquent. And, I mean, it was really a work of art. It was comparable to a Picasso or a Rembrandt. We, we still weren't allowed even though we were the ones working with the material and installing the material, we still were not allowed to take photos of our craftsmanship. You know, we built uh, private safe rooms in these custom homes uh, that rightfully the people wanted to maintain and keep private from the general public or the peering eyes. After all, what's the point of having a safe room <clears throat> if everybody knows about it? How safe is it? You know, we used to build hidden walls in, in homes, uh, hidden safes, hidden vaults, all kinds of really neat, intricate stuff. And the train carpenters would come in and their work was just so pristine unless you knew that that wall moved. Unless you knew where the mechanism was to get it to open up, you would have absolutely no idea that there was a room behind the wall. I mean, it was just so cool, the experiences I've had in my life. With that said, when winter comes, the body naturally will get less and less vitamin D, which will make it susceptible, okay, to contracting an ailment or as your body starts to purge the toxins from it, uh, you become ill, weakened, weakened state. Uh, immune system, partially because you're not getting enough vitamin D. Vitamin D, ladies and gentlemen, is something the body creates when you're out in the sun like a lizard absorbing uh, God's nature, all right, the sunlight. Now, they've got supplements for vitamin D, but they're not near as efficient as your body that was created by the heavenly creator. And so naturally, a lot of people are going to fall ill this winter due to the old jabby. Oh, just watch. It's coming. This is my prediction. I'm not a medical doctor. <laughs> it's very plain to see that the governments of the world have never done anything. The fictions of the world with a group of men that have an agenda, the group of women that have an agenda to better their life by feeding off of you like vultures, like vampires, ladies and gentlemen. And there's coming a time where Marxism, socialism... Uh, dictatorship, whatever you want to call it, it's coming. <laughs> and the ones who have prepared are going to sustain the longest, might see the end of the light at the tunnel. But in the dead nuts of winter, if you ain't got a fuel source, if you don't have a heat source, if you don't have candlelight, or oil burning candles, the odds of you sticking it out are slim to none. People say, oh, well, Derek, they, they'll never do that. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I watched them shut off the electricity to families of five during the beginning of this whole COVID horseshit when we would think that we would want them bathed, clean clothes, their washing machine working, they shut off their electricity. Now their water heater was electric. I went directly to the prosecuting attorney in the county. I said, look, you assholes are saying that this is a pandemic, that this is real, that people are dying, and yet you're turning off the electricity to people's homes so they can't shower, they can't bathe, they can't wash their clothes, they can't keep hot soup on the stove. 
How does that make any sense? He goes, it doesn't. That's coming from a prosecuting attorney. All right, and they've got control over that stuff. They can turn around and tell the electric company, you ain't shutting nothing off. This is a pandemic. You can't be doing that crap. But they're incentivized by this paper fiat currency to do evil, sinister stuff to their fellow brothers and sisters. When good men become desperate, good men will do evil, sinister shit. Best believe it. That's human nature. All right? <laughs> Everything seems peachy and keen right now. I'm telling you, this is the calm before the storm, ladies and gentlemen. Soak it up and enjoy it. And if you want to lollygag around and procrastinate, you will suffer the consequences later, I promise you. <clears throat> I don't say these things lightly. Wood burning stove is important. If you can't get fuel or bar chain oil for a chainsaw and you don't know how to sharpen your own chain, you may be limited in what you can actually do. So it would be a wise investment to invest in yourself and buy yourself an axe, a hatchet, and a handsaw. These are just good tools to have around because the only thing that can fail is you. On a chainsaw, there's many mechanisms that can plug up, gum up, and if you don't know how to pull it apart and put it back together, well, you're without a source of heat again. You're out there breaking sticks with your feet, trying to keep warm. But stockpiling wood is a good idea, ladies and gentlemen. Keeping it dry, tarping it up, making sure that you have a source of heat. When Mother Nature rips through here, but worse off than Mother Nature. More scary than Mother Nature at this point is a group of men running around alleging that they're government and they're here for your safety. It's the most scary thing I've ever heard. I would rather stand in a hurricane, tussle with a tornado, than deal with a bunch of psychopaths and their ideology of what they believe is best for everybody else. While they live high on the hog, they tell you, you should just give a little more. You should just uh, allow us to tax you to prosperity, ladies and gentlemen. We can get you there. Just listen. Just look. In fact, we're going to give you back a few crumbs of the $6 trillion we just borrowed from your future offspring. We'll give you a little $1,000 here and a little $3,000 here. We're going to you know, ease up on, uh, on, on, on foreclosures due to COVID, which still hasn't been isolated, ladies and gentlemen. There will be some trying times ahead, and some of them will prevail and, and, and succeed, while others flounder and fail for their lack of due diligence and preparedness. You know, one of the first things you learn in uh, Boy Scouts is that you are to always be prepared. Always. Always make sure you have a little something on you to get you by to survive. Survival skills should be taught from elementary all the way through college. They're not. They don't teach you the proper plants. They don't teach you what's healthy, what you can eat, what you can't eat. They don't teach you all these things. If you look back at Native American culture and history, from a very young adolescent, they were always taught, well, berries were good to eat, what berries weren't good to eat, how to tan a hide, how to create a blanket, how to make you a teepee, how to make you a shelter, right? They don't teach any of that anymore in schools. In very, very few amount of years they actually did teach any of that. They need you to be dependent on them because they need you at the end of the day. They need you. You don't need them. They need you. So if you take a bit of sound advice and get an opportunity on one of those buy, sell, and trades, and you see a wood-burning stove, but you don't know where you're going to put it in your house. You have no idea uh, what you would even do with it. Just remember this. Even if you left the wood-burning stove outside, you would still have a cooktop to make a hot meal on. And eventually... When necessity kicks in, 
whether it be from Mother Nature or something else along those lines or a man-made disaster, you will have the ability to move that thing into your house and heat it up and keep care of your loved ones. What is it, like seven or eight months out of the year? Uh, the northern part of the hemisphere is cold or cooler, cool enough to turn on the heat. Wouldn't it be nice to know that if uh, you don't have gas or electricity because shit has gone awry, that you have the ability to keep your loved ones warm and taken care of? Not only that, but it's great physical uh, cardio exercise for a lot of the people that uh, need it. But... Um, what other great survival stuff can you keep around? You know, with a wood-burning stove, you can also boil water that's not uh, conducive for being drank because it's full of parasites or, or it's just not uh, clean, you know? Everybody's uh, gotten used to that lavish lifestyle of just being able to uh, turn on the faucet and get hot water. Well, that's something else a wood-burning stove can provide for you. You put your boiling pot of water on, or a pot of water on your wood burning stove and now all of a sudden you got enough hot water to take a bath and clean yourself up because cleanliness is next to godliness and it reduces um, it reduces health ailments something else to think about wood burning stoves are just so good on so many ways there's 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 never been a better heat source that I've ever been around in my life than a wood burning stove and I've been around 34,000 BTU propane burners. I've been around diesel burners. I've been around everything you can name. And I'm going to tell you right now, the best heat source I have ever enjoyed in my life was a wood-burning stove. <clears throat> so, if you get an opportunity to find yourself a wood-burning stove, I suggest you uh, take that opportunity to acquire it. There aren't enough people out there talking about getting prepared. And there should be. The National Defense Authorization Act was signed by Obama, and I ranted and I raved about it because I knew that scumbag was going to sign it. And uh, at that point, my parents did an intervention on me. They thought I was on drugs. I'll never forget laughing so damn hard at them. They all show up to my house, knock on the door. I go, hey, what are you guys doing? Come on in. Shit, welcome. Well, Derek, we're worried about you worried about me. What do you mean? Derek, are you doing drugs? <laughs> Holy shit, it's come to this? <laughs> you guys think I'm on drugs? Well, you, you know, you just, you seem a little mantic. You seem a little frazzled. You, you just don't seem like you're quite... And my brother Tyler Reese, he remembers this. That's funny. Yeah. I was hitting the gym with my brother Tyler Reese at that point. No drinking, no drugs, no alcohol, no nothing. You know, Tyler's been a wonderful influence in my life. Good brother. And uh, so anyway, when my folks showed up to my house thinking that, uh, you know, I was on meth, coke, heroin, something. They couldn't just, couldn't just accept the fact that I was worried about everybody. It, it had to be a substance abuse problem. Surely it's a substance abuse that's got this kid off his rocker. We need to go have an intervention. <laughs> Mental health evaluation. I'll tell you right now, my folks don't think I'm crazy anymore. They don't think I'm batshit crazy anymore. They're seeing what's unfolding, and uh, they keep their mouths shut for the most part. We have private conversations amongst ourselves, and it's nice to know that uh, they see it too. I'm not crazy. I'm not the only one. A wood-burning stove. A pellet stove ain't going to do you any good. Why? Because a pellet stove requires electricity. We'll get you a wood-burning stove so you can cook a hot meal when shit hits the fan. Keep your family and your babies warm. Be able to bathe them and wash clothes in hot water if need be. Um, fishing poles. Good thing to have around. Lots of fishing poles. Good fishing line. Go out to Cabela's and get yourself some... 30, 40 pound spider wire, some good test line, so you can set set lines out, come by once a day, check your lines. If it comes to that point, which I think it will, ultimately, like I keep telling you guys, you don't realize how sensitive this whole economy is. It only takes 
72 hours of shutting down truckers and your stores will be empty because as soon as people notice that there's not so many semis running down the road as soon as they start to notice things are vanishing from the shelf and not being replenished there's going to be a mountain of people that run to them because they don't know how to survive the only thing they've ever known is how to go to walmart and buy a hunk of beef or go to uh, sam's club and get a box of cereal there are a lot of people out there, 350 million Americans, I would say the better of them wouldn't know how to survive if their life depended on it, which makes them dangerous. Makes them dangerous because good men will do evil things to survive. Make no mistake about it. I don't know why they're pushing it this way. I have no idea. I mean, I have some ideas, but... And the other thing that bewilders me is how good men are allowing this to transpire. <laughs> I can think of about, probably about 5,000 agents and agency that should all be strung up from light poles by now. I mean, when they didn't intervene with the child human trafficking, with the cocaine smuggling, uh, when they aided and embedded uh, uh, crimes against humanity by using Pablo Escobar to move cocaine into the United States in the 60s and the 70s, when they uh, 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 trained Osama bin Laden as a CIA operative and then released him over there to conduct their business, when, when the CIA started moving cocaine in here so they could have a black ops budget, they're basically a foreign government unto themselves. They have their own military, ladies and gentlemen. They have their own helicopters. They have their own tanks. They have their own fucking planes. It's amazing. Amazing. Every alphabet gang, ladies and gentlemen, directly or indirectly answers to the Vatican. I'm talking the MI5, MI6, uh, DEA, ATF, FBI, CIA, NSA. They all answer to the motherland. The Queen of England and the Vatican. I don't know why people can't see it. They do not like you. They think you're a cockroach, a waste of air and space, a single cell amoeba that doesn't have a right to exist on their earth. That's what they believe. There are world-renowned scientists doctors coming out saying that there is no COVID it's a fallacy it's a fiction the CDC can't prove it they're being sued right now the news media is not telling you about this you have thousands of doctors that are suing the government at this point for uh, false and fictitious statements to create hysteria and pandemonia and panic amongst the people, not only of the United States of America, but also the world over. You have 1,200 architects that are all telling you that 9-11 was a controlled de demolition. Uh, you now have experts coming out saying Timothy McVeigh could not have done that extensive of damage uh, to the Oklahoma City building with just one rider truck and a bunch of fertilizer. Uh, that's all coming to light. You have the CIA declassified documents of the um, U.S. government going down to Panama and South America and infecting people with things like syphilis, gonorrhea, uh, AIDS as an experiment to curve the reproductive organs of the populace down there, the people, the men and women, a uh, form of population control. I mean, at this point, if you still are sucking on the tit of government, believing what these people are fucking telling you, good God almighty. Just think of one time, just give me one instance, any government throughout the world hasn't had to rob Peter to pay Paul. Give me one scenario. Heck, I'll put $100 up. If one man can bring me forward an instance where the government 
a group of men haven't had to steal from another to give to somebody else. Give me one instance. It doesn't exist. I know, because I'm a critical thinker. I've had some people propose some pretty good ideas, and then I sit down, and I turn around, and I show them that even though what they did was good, they still had to rob Peter to pay Paul. And they go, damn, thought I had that hundred bucks in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. Got uh, social media is going on. There's allegedly some kids that are being, uh, they're trying to walk out of the out of a high school and uh, supposedly they lock the doors on the offspring. Now, if this happens in your community, this is what I want you to take these notes, write this shit down. If they attempt to lock your offspring into a school because they're afraid they will walk out because they're not going to wear masks and they don't believe in this shit any more than the parents do at this point, and they lock those doors, that is a safety violation. Call the fire marshal immediately and have these assholes arrested. If the fire marshal shows up and doors are locked and kids, people, men, women are being locked in a building, that is false imprisonment, ladies and gentlemen. It's an arrestable offense. Not only that, when you call the fire marshal, it's a safety issue. If they try to lock your offspring up in a high school because your offspring have grown a brain and decided for themselves that this rhetoric they're not going to comply with anymore, immediately call the fire marshal. Um, what other topics am I seeing today? Pardon me, I mean result. I've never seen so many infomercials about canning goods and vacuum sealing as I've seen in the last six, seven months. You don't think that's a coincidence, do you? I said same thing last year with the store closing entrances and leaving one door open. Yep, call the fire marshal when it happens. These people love currency. They love the fallacy of uh, being able to charge entities up and uh, usurping their credits on account. When it all boils down, it's really about love. Love for your fellow man. Helping them ascend to the mind and taking care of them. What will keep people from heathenous ways is when your neighbor is hungry, do yourself a favor and feed him and his family. Because here's the issue. If you don't, one of these nights while you're sound asleep in your comfy little home, they'll be kicking in the door because they're hungry. So do yourself a favor. You see your family, your friends, your neighbors in your community in distress. Help them out so they don't turn to uh, sinister means of being able to provide for their own. Help them. Help them learn. Help them grow. Make sure they're fed. Make sure they got, you know, warmth in their house. Uh, Wood-burning stoves, guys. Buy them up. I see uh, wood-burning stoves prices going through the roof just like... Uh, Gold and silver will eventually go through the roof. Why? Gold and silver will go through the roof not because gold and silver are more valued. Gold and silver will go through the roof FRN-wise because the FRN is absolutely worthless and it will take a mountain of FRNs to even acquire an ounce of gold. It's a way of showing the devaluation of the Federal Reserve note, the lackluster that people no longer have for the Federal Reserve note because they realize it's worthless. Just like in Venezuela. You know, there were billions, trillions of dollars floating down the street of Venezuelan currency. It wasn't worth anything. People started making purses out of it and just knickknacks and all kinds of stuff. Because PBBD and the people. Tell me what PBBD is. I'm curious. I'm learning something here. <clears throat> if people believe in it, then it has power. When people don't believe in it anymore, it has no power. Do unto others as you want done to you. Yes, that's very true, but in a situation where people are trying to survive, remember, folks, necessity trumps law. If your neighbor Ned is hungry and his babies 
uh, aren't getting food and water and their liver is shutting down their kidneys are shutting down your your neighbor Ned will very quickly turn to something you've never seen before because that's called survival it's just like watching a watching a, a cat a, a, a house cat a domestic house cat fight a bear because her baby's in danger that cat will become something you've never seen before. That cat will take on a 1,200-pound bear, not because uh, it doesn't fear the bear, but because it doesn't have any other option, ladies and gentlemen. That cat will become a lethal machine or do its damnedest to eliminate anything that threatens its survival. Corner a coyote in a, uh, in a Quonset sometime. Coyote don't weigh very much. It ain't that big. It ain't that bad. And if you get your hands around it and keep it from latching on to you, chances are it won't survive. But you put that coyote in a small barn confined with you and get in that barn with it, I guarantee you that coyote will look like a 150-pound wolf. That coyote is going to rip you apart. It's going to do whatever it can to survive. Don't think man's any different. Don't think for a second a man's any different. Look at prison, for fuck's sake. These people will sharpen spoons, plastic spoons, harden them, fray and sp uh, split wires to create a heat source to smelt them down and create shanks out of plastic in order to survive, and they will use them. Hmm. Don't think that man is any better than any other animal out there when it comes to surviving. Get to know your community. Get to know your friends. Get to know your family. Because we got shit coming down the pike. They didn't drain the swamp, ladies and gentlemen. They just got everybody dumbed down long enough to implement their plan. And now they're in place. Now they're ready with their jabby. <clears throat> Not to mention the bombardment of aerosols they spray on us day in and day out. Um, <laughs> I was talking to one of my family members the other day on Facebook. And she's like, you know, I love you, but I'm not into that conspiracy shit. Oh, it's not a conspiracy. It's a fact. <laughs> it ain't a conspiracy anymore, baby. It's a fact. These people are, are hell-bent on destroying our way of life. And they're going to use any means necessary. Look, all of a sudden the Taliban and ISIS just pop back up magically in the middle of COVID. When everybody should be flopping around like fish. Right? Because it's such a pandemic. I mean, if, heaven forbid, everybody's dying. Guy got shot nine times the other day. Guess what he died of? Let's say it all together. COVID. Because bullets don't kill people anymore. COVID does. Guy died in a car crash the other day. But he didn't die because of the lacerations and the contusions and, 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 and the internal bleeding. Nope, let's say it together. What did he die of? Let's all brainwash each other together. COVID. That's what he died of. Not because he sustained trauma from being hit by an 18-wheeler. Hell no. Didn't you know? It was COVID. They're targeting our youth. The next generation, if we don't help them out, is going to be brainwashed to such a degree... The illusion of freedom will be just that, an illusion. It will be as though it never existed. The one free nation left in this world that actually stood for something will be stripped of all its values. The rest of the world watches the American people because we're the only ones still loaded for bear. And we are, make no mistake about that. I think it's funny how some military men go, oh, we're at war for 20 years with Afghanistan. If you don't think that we we will come into the United States under orders and subdue you people, I'm going, shit, those people were fighting with fucking toothpicks compared to what we have over here. If you dumbasses really think that you're going to take over the American people overnight, like a walk through the fucking park, you're absolutely insane. You're absolutely insane. You couldn't beat a bunch of people in a desert? And you think that you're going to beat a bunch of people here? You're nuts. You're batshit crazy and off your fucking rocker. It will be a never-ending war. The Afghan people have a lot of heart. People don't realize that. 
you've been ingrained in, uh, to believe that these people are your enemy. They're not your enemy. They're just trying to survive. They're doing what, what naturally comes to them, which is survival. Could you imagine having a bunch of foreigners on your soil, beating your women, pushing your kids around, buttstock, uh, punching you in the face as a grown man in your own home? How much aggression and anger would that build in you over time? And after 20 years, two generations of it, mind you, you don't think those people are pissed off? Hmm. Yeah. Just put yourself in their shoes for a minute. And then we have the audacity to call them terrorists and Neanderthals. Bullshit. Those people just want to be left the fuck alone. We breed terrorism by breeding hatred, by going into other nations and forcing our way upon them. Let them people be. Leave them the hell alone. You know what? I see a lot of hornet's nests around. You know what I've learned from a young age? If you don't go start no shit, there won't be no shit. Yeah, I know that hornet's nest is full of a bunch of little boogers that'll sting me and hurt me like hell, but as a young adolescent, I used to enjoy uh, beating the piss out of them. And then I'd get stung the shit out of. But you know, if I'd have just walked by and minded my own business and left them the hell alone, it wouldn't have been a problem. Wouldn't have been a problem. But nah, my dumb ass has to go get oven mitts on and a baseball bat and sticks and rocks and go over there and fiddle with them until I piss them off. Is it the hornet's fault that they stung me? Or is it my fault for agitating them? Think about that. I created enemies where otherwise enemies didn't exist. They were just protecting their home, which they built with their own their their own intuition and instinct. And here come the long Derek one day, going, oh, you don't have a right to be here. I'm going to get rid of you. <laughs> How quickly we fall outside of our senses following propaganda. And God bless the USA. Everybody's an enemy. The most dangerous religion in the world, ladies and gentlemen, is the notion that one group of men has a right to control another group of men. It's the most dangerous religion in the world. It breeds hatred. It breeds fear, uncertainty, and instead of working together for the greater good, we're over here casting stones, pissing off hornet's nests, and we ain't got no business doing it. Government cares so much about me, they sell me these cancer sticks that are FDA approved. Can you believe that shit? This is FDA approved. Could you imagine if the government came out tomorrow and said, every last one of your offspring from the age of six on up has to smoke these? They have to. They're FDA approved. It's mandatory. They've got formaldehyde in them and a, a number of carcinogens, but because they're FDA approved, and we're in the middle of a, a, of a air pandemic. And these little things here heat the air at one end, which kill all the bacteria. And on the back side of it, they have a filter, which purifies it. And because this is FDA approved, your six-year-old child, if it can inhale and exhale, must smoke these. Could you imagine the outrage people would have? I'm making a very poignant point here. The old jabby. Think about it. When's the last time these people have ever come up with an idea that has benefited you? Never. <clears throat> they don't want people teaching you about land patents. They don't want you people teaching you about your unalienable rights. They want you to believe that you have civil rights. Civil rights, ladies and gentlemen, are privileges granted by a group of men who proclaim to be in a democracy. 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 Democracy, for those of you that aren't uh, inclined to know, is mob rule. My buddies all hit the gym. Your buddies uh, all play video games. Who do you think's going to rule in our democracy? My buddies all shoot guns. Your buddies all play with, uh, play with the wing wong in the shower. Who do you think's going to win? My buddies study strategy. My buddies study, uh, study uh, intellectual material, leading them to be superior. What do you think the Jesuits do? 
the Jesuits have practiced manipulation of language for thousands of years, and they're very good at it. Because through the manipulation of language, ladies and gentlemen, you can control societies. The whole goal was to make you a prisoner in your own mind, and they're doing a very good job of making sure that the free thinkers are ostracized while the followers are praised, raised to a higher standard. If you don't believe me, look at your bumbling idiot known as the President of the United States. Prime example of how stupidity is praised in this country while free thinkers are ostracized. I'll leave you with that thought.